Good morning, everyone. Hope you really enjoyed last night's uh, deputation with Howard and Michelle. Uh, so good to see their joys. Uh, so hard to see the hard times that they had. Uh, but that is a part of ministry in this broken world. There are going to be hard times, uh, but the joys will far outweigh all of that. Uh, indeed, uh, if you know from one uh, from John chapter 1, uh, we are children of God in Christ. Uh, see, when Jesus came into the world and the world was created through him, the world didn't recognize him, says 1 John chapter 1, verse 10. Jesus came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, he gave the right to be children of God. What an incredible thing. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, or of the will of flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. See, what we strive for, it's a part of a spiritual battle, but it's the will of God. And we, weak flesh, are made children of God. What an incredible thing and incredible to sort of reflect upon that with Howard and Michelle uh, as they serve uh, with CMS in the Philippines. Uh, but that brings us back to Psalm 82 for today. Now Psalm 82 is just a short one compared with the ones around it. And it starts off in a funny way. God has taken his place in the divine assembly as if somehow God is just another God. Yahweh is just another God. But that's not what is meant here. He judges among the gods. And then the psalmist cries, How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Now, this is just a real cry of life in, in a broken world. Sometimes it's hard to be a follower of the true and one God. And so the cry out is, Provide justice for the needy. Uphold the rights of the oppressed. Rescue the poor. Save them from the wicked. A cry that we could echo in our own time, of course. For they do not understand, verse 5, they wander in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. They should be able to trust in a righteous God. They should be able to turn. But that is not to understand the world the way the world is. Broken by sin, people so destitute because of the brokenness of the world. But restoration is promised and guaranteed in Christ. It will come. Verse 6, though, in the Old Testament says, I said, you are God, you are sons of the Most High. Uh, I think this is reflecting upon the great position of Israel in God's plans and purposes. However, verse 7, you will die like men and fall like any other ruler. Uh, all the kings of this world, all of the chosen people of God in the Old Testament, the Israelites, uh, they would die. And largely Israel, as we've seen in the other Psalms, turned from God and failed to serve God as they should. Of course, we all do. Uh, we all fail. Uh, and that is exactly why Jesus had to come, because the Old Testament could not rely upon humanity. Verse 9, Rise up, God, judge the earth, for all the nations belong to you. And so really, in the end, the psalmist does acknowledge God's preeminent place. It might be among the gods with a little g, but he'll judge them, or the fake gods and the fake gods that humans have made. We want the true God to rise up. Uh, for the Israelites, the true God, God rose up when Jesus entered the world and said that those who believe in him can be called children of God. For us, if you believe in him already, and I hope you do, uh, we are children of God. And so as we look at the world around us, we still see this brokenness, we still cry out, but what we cry is, come Jesus just like in these other Psalms. And as we reflect upon hard ministry, like how and Michelle told us about last night, we think, well, come back, Jesus, but the hard ministry is worth it. We want to be involved in calling people from darkness to life because we're calling them from being humans to being children of God. That's a great calling that we have. Uh, it's time for you to pray, to give thanks for that calling, and also to pray that those you know might be called children of God. What an incredible privilege. Amen.